we now have a brand new repository on GitHub. And let's say we want to add some more files. Now, when we created this repository, we actually created a new file called readme.md and pushed that up. Now, pushing is the term that we use to basically get code from our computer, off of our computer, and onto GitHub. And that's called a push. And really, there's four steps to this. So whenever we create a new file or we edit an existing file, we have something called unstaged work. And then we need to stage our files or stage our work. Then we need to commit our work. And then we need to push our work to the repository. So if I do pwd ls-la, you can see I'm in my test folder. And this is where that test readme file was when we first created this new repository. Now we created that file by saying echo, a bunch of stuff in here, and then we forced it into some file.txt. That's basically all we did there. But now let's go ahead and actually create a brand new file, something that we're going to want to really work with. So I'm going to stay in my command line and I'm going to be using a program called Vim. You can use nano or vi or anything else you like, or if you want to, you can get totally out of this and you can use VS Code, Sublime, Atom, whatever text editor you like to use for writing your regular code. For me, I'm going to create a new file using Vim, just so I can stay in my terminal. I'm going to call it first-push.txt. Now in here, I'm simply going to write, this is the first push. And write and quit. Now if you don't know Vim, I'm not going to teach you Vim, it's, it's pretty hardcore for an editor, you could just as easily use nano, and it's pretty much the exact same thing. We'll talk a little bit more about these as, as we progress through the course as well. So now if I do ls-la, I have a new file in here called firstpush.txt. And if I do git status, and this is a command that you're going to want to run over and over and over again, you're actually going to want to run git status so often that it just becomes habit. When your brain forgets what you're doing, you just automatically type git status. Now in here we have untracked files. This is a brand new file called firstpush.txt. Now this is technically unstaged. What that means is even if we did a git push origin master like we saw a couple of videos ago or that last video, nothing's going to happen. We're not telling git to actually add this file to our little package and then ship it off to GitHub. So it's not actually doing anything. We need to actually add this file. So git add, and then I'll just type first and then hit tab to autocomplete that. git add first push.txt. Now it'll look like nothing happens, but if I get status again, you can actually see that the file is now in green. It says new file. Changes to be committed. This is now staged. What the, the file in green means, or what the line in green means is when we create a new commit, or think of it like this, when we create a new package, we're going to open up a new box, we're going to put this file in it, we're going to close that box, and we're going to write who it's going to, and who put the file inside the box, so the author. That's what a commit is. So at this point, we have this file, it's staged, it's ready to go into a box, it's ready to be committed. So we do git commit-m for a message, and we'll just say this is the first official push. Technically, it's not because we pushed once already, but this is a more in-depth look at it. So I'm going to say that this is the first official push. Now, if I go over to GitHub and I just refresh this, we're going to see that nothing has happened. My file's not in there yet. And that's actually for a good reason. We've only created the commit. We haven't actually sent this box or told FedEx or UPS to pick up this box and send it to GitHub. We now need to do that. We need to call the delivery company and say, hey, come pick up our box. We need this to go to GitHub. And we do that with git push origin master. Now, what this means, actually, what I'm going to do here is clear this. Git push origin master. Put that in the middle of the screen. So git is our main git command. Push is what we're doing. We're going to say, hey, take our current commits and push them to wherever our origin is. Now, our origin is GitHub. That's what this is. This is our origin. Your origin might be GitLab if you're using GitLab, or it might be Bitbucket, or self-hosted GitLab. It could be anything, but in terms of Git, we just call it an origin, and it takes care of where it's supposed to go and, and how to track it and things like that. And then master is our branch. Now in GitHub, 
we tend to work off of a primary branch called master. It's like when you serve an HTML website and your browser automatically looks for index.html, well, in Git, it's automatically looking for a branch called master. And if we look here, we can see we only have one branch called master. It's the default one. Now, technically, you can change that, but by default, it's always master. And so we want to say in this branch, and we'll talk more about branches down the line, but in this branch, we want to add our box of files. So we simply say, take our box of files, hey, Git, take our box of files, push it, or, you know, package it up, deliver it to GitHub, and put it in the master branch or on the master shelf. If it was a giant warehouse, we'd be putting it on the master shelf. So I hit enter, git push origin master. Now, if you don't have an SSH key working, uh, this is going to ask you for your username and your password over and over and over again. It'll just keep asking you every time we want to do this. And that's why I really suggest you get an operating SSH key. Now, this is all good to go. It's using delta compression up to three threads. It's compressing our objects, two out of two are done. There's a bunch of magic behind the scenes. And now it is saying we have a new git commit from our current master branch to the origin master branch. And let's go take a look at this. Let's refresh our page now and we'll see a second file, git push.txt. And I can click it and it says, this is the first push. Now, where did commits really come in? Well, we'll talk about commits down the line, but to see a commit is really just looking through the history of your code. So this is our first commit. I made this 29 minutes ago. And the first official push, which is technically wrong because you can see that there's two commits in here. So one of this was obviously the first push. But the first official push, this is what our commit message was, was made three minutes ago. Now we can browse the repository at this point in history. So if I click this, this essentially just went back in time before the, the new first push.txt file even existed. So this is almost like we're actually looking at the code from 30 minutes ago. And if I click this, well, this is just going to look exactly like where we're currently at. We're currently at master. Now you can see it actually changes the URL up here. So let's just go back to our code and we just want to make sure we're on just the regular tree here. It's just regular master. And we can take a look at this file at any, at any point in time. So really that's all there is to pushing. Now as a quick little recap, to push you have unstaged work, then you need to stage your work. I'm going to cancel that instead of complaining that it doesn't have a command called stage. So you have to stage your work, then you have to commit your work with a commit message, and then you have to push your work to your origin master. Now remember to commit often, commit small commits. The reason for that is because if I was to go in here and let's say you and I were working together and your, your first commit, well, this one only has one change in it, but let's say your commit has changed 170 files, which is not unheard of, but that is a rather large commit. If I'm doing any sort of code review and I need to see what you changed, it's really hard for me to go through 170 files just to find maybe one little bug or scenario or a reference to a piece of code. Whereas this is just one tiny piece of line. But if you keep them somewhere between one and 10 files, that's usually a pretty good size. And really that's all just because smaller commits are easier for coworkers to read through. It's also easier for you to read through down the line. 